You are Harold, the unsophisticated, sincere, and literally wide-eyed handyman aboard the good ship Fedora One, which has been stuck at the bottom of an alien ocean for 50 years after a solar flare knocked it out of the void. Harold is a dreamer and an optimist, the kid at the back of the class staring out the window, always willing to help the rest of the ship's citizens with problems both technical and emotional, an open and honest soul who people naturally confide in, and they do regularly. The game is strictly a narrative affair. 85% of your playtime is spent walking between conversations, and most of those conversations consist of one character or another unloading their burdens onto poor Harold's shoulders. On and on it goes as you, the player, guide Harold between chats in which the Fedora One's many quirky inhabitants choose to make their neuroses the plumber's problem. It's not without charm. Slow Bros clearly has a great deal of affection for its characters. Combine that with the game's unique style of presentation, the game has an impressive handmade claymation-esque art style that dovetails nicely with its deliberately school play-like delivery, and you have a recipe to pique my curiosity, if not my outright investment. But those chats often have the feeling of an after-school special, sweet, simple themes and morals delivered clearly. It gets fatiguing and all the stranger because you catch occasional flashes of a more daring game hidden beneath. But that bolder game is only glimpsed. It's never on screen for long. The bigger issue is that Harold Halibut's story almost seems determined not to start. The pacing is just off. Harold Halibut consists of six chapters, and I spent the first two, several hours of real-life time waiting for something to happen. Plenty of things could have happened, the game lays down track for all sorts of interesting plots, from the sinister corporation that runs the ship to the underground cell of rebels that operates like an aquatic silhouette from Deus Ex. But the game too often shies away from making any of its characters seem too villainous or putting any of them in real danger. It's frustrating and fatiguing in equal measure, and a shame because there are things to like here. The handcrafted art style is an untrammeled success, and the game's 70s British kids TV show aesthetic almost manages to justify how sweet and safe the entire thing feels. Almost. By the end of my time with it, I found myself wishing for the Harold Halibut that occasionally pokes its head out. The one that broke into West German jazz apropos of absolutely nothing that made genuinely funny jokes about politics and philosophy, and that was, in general, much more willing to linger in those strange asides. Instead, it spends most of its time lingering in conversations that eventually wore out their welcome, and in a plot determined to play it safe.